Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sword, Associate Professor of Computer Information Systems at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video is going to be taking a look at GameMaker Studio version 2. Uh, we're going to be making a game called Voxel, and we're going to be using the drag and drop interface. So I already have a more advanced video available. Find those in my playlists if you're looking for something that does this using the game maker language, but this is drag and drop, so we're going to make we're gonna make do with what we have. So my game is going to be in 720p resolution, so 1280 by 720 will be the resolution for the screen in the game. I am going to be using 60 by 60 tiles. So I highly recommend if this is your first time coming through this game with me and you're following along, use 60 by 60 for everything just so you know everything matches up. And of course, once you have it working, you can go back and change everything up. And of course, there's tons of ways we can make this more advanced, but we're keeping it, keeping it simple for you guys for this, uh, this introductory lesson here. So we only need four different types of sprites to make this thing work. We're going to have a hero who's going to be walking around, and then he's going to be pushing boxes. And then we're going to have wall objects that are obviously walls that you can't you know, progress through in any way or shape or form. And we're also going to be having goals because the goal is to push all of the boxes to an appropriate goal. And so, yep, so again, if you want to go, you know, I'm not going to show you a video. You can go to the internet. You can go to YouTube here and find a video on how this game works. It, but it's basically exactly as you see it. You move around, you walk, you push blocks, and then we determine if there's a winning condition. So I've already gone ahead and played around with setting up the graphics just so I don't have to spend the time discussing that with you guys. So again, everything is 60 by 60. I have not played with the origin points. If you want, you know, I like locking these things in place once I have them going. Since then, because it's real easy to accidentally click in here and change everything when it comes to where this sprite is put on your screen. So, so I have like a little peg for my hero. It's the only one I created myself, and you could tell my artwork is awesome so my hero sprite and so the one thing to make sure you do here is just use 60 by 60 you know as I'm saying before but use the entire sprite for each of your images if you make your own or whatever you're gonna do make sure that no pixel I mean you can have pixels in the corners or whatnot but make sure you go the full horizontal distance and the whole vertical distance just so we don't have to play with collision mask settings or anything else that uh, you guys know can be a problem here in Game Maker. So my hero is 60 by 60. Yeah, it kind of looks like me a little more every day, right? So then I have a box that I stole from the internet, scaled it down to 60 by 60. Doesn't look too bad, right? I have a wall. I don't even know if that's a wall, but you know, just something, just something to indicate that that's a something, you know, top down, something that I cannot progress through, 60 by 60 again, and a sprite for my goal which is 60 by 60 as well. So I've already gone ahead and set up the sprites. I've already gone ahead and set up a test room for us so we can see here and we can discuss the movement of the character because once we have this thing moving in one direction it shouldn't be too difficult to go ahead and make it work for all the directions. So I've kind of thought about this and spent some time thinking about this and you go well there's two ways the character can move in this game and let's just say we're, per we're going to the right uh, we're going to the right here. So, so the, the character can move to the right if there's an open space, and the character can move to the right if there's a box, and then he would push the box, right? Or the character, or he or she or whoever would, would push the box. So of these situations, these of these nine situations, and I'll discuss why nine in a second here, why these four, right? So open space, open space, open space. Yes, I should be able to move if I press right. And here, if I press right, I should be able to move to the open space, which then moves the box. And that's why I, these goals are here just to indicate that I should be able to push. And there's nothing, you know, I'm not using this level for anything. And I do have my code in here. So if I run this, just to say, I have written all the code so far. So the four cases, I press right. Oops, I have it over here. Let me let me start it over. So I start it over. So it looks the same. Here you go. So here you go. So here's my game running. I press right, and you should see four of them move because it's the three characters that are open spaces, and then the one that has just one box. The character is not strong enough to push two boxes at the same time, and the character cannot push a box through a wall. So, yep, so I have it working, at least, you know, nothing else, and I keep going, I keep going, and you can see, yes, I have something going here, and is in a, we have depth issues, we have issues with a lot of stuff, but but the, the basics are here. And so, 
I can show you the code. It's drag and drop like I discussed. So now for the hero, and again, this is just for the right. And now getting this all on one is impossible, but you can kind of see the pseudocode here. Why does it go all the way up there if I want to see, let's see if I can... There we go. Drag and drop is horrendous. Got to make this more visible for you guys. There you go. Let's see what I can do here. So, and so there's one little extra thing I added here. Here's the pseudocode and then here's the other code. So the important part to read here is if solid base class is not overlapping self at x plus 60 comma y, because I'm trying to move to the right, jump to the right. So this first if statement is basically saying, is there an open space to my right? And if so, move to the right. And if there isn't an overlapping, or if there isn't a solid base class there, if it's, you know, what if, if it's not an empty space, then what happens? There's got to be something there. And so I actually changed this up. I used parenting for this because I didn't want to have to write so much code because I would have to write something like, if there's no box, to my right and if there's no wall but then if there's a box then we have to check to see if there's no box to its right and it gets really complicated the amount of code we would have to write so what I did was I, I decided that a box is a solid object in this game right a box is a solid object something that you know is has tangible mass and something but this can be movable but the wall is the same thing it has tangible space and it's not movable and I can't do anything with it but those two things are the only two things part of my game so I'm like how about I create a parent call it solid base class and then I can use inheritance and the is a relationship of what inheritance is and now say because I parented, you can see this because I have my children here, solid base class is a parent to box and wall. I don't have to do anything else but just parent the two things together. And now I can say it. this has an is a relationship because the box is a solid object. The wall is a solid object. So when I come back here and I say this, I can say, okay, if I'm going to my right, and I say, okay, if there is not a solid base class 60 pixels to my right relative to where I am, then that's that you know that's what this thing reads off it doesn't read perfectly top to bottom but one more time it says if there is nothing that is solid 60 pixels to my right relative to where i am then jump 60 pixels to the right that makes sense right because there's an empty space and again the solid base class is there to prevent us from having to duplicate code and it just takes these nine situations that we showed here it takes all of these nine situations and you know that resolves down to one instead of having to think of three different one. So, and then this case too, like when I push a block, push a box, I have to make sure now if there's you now this is the else part of that if you were looking at this, because if if there is if it's if there is a solid base a solid base class object here, now I have to differentiate: is it a box or is it a wall? Because if it's a wall, I don't do anything. But if it's a box, then you go, oh, I can move. Well, not necessarily. Now I have to check to see if, the, now, if I know there's a box, that there's nothing to my right. And just imagine, again, thinking of all that code you would have to write to go, okay, there's a box, but now I have to make sure there's no box or no wall. And it just gets really, really, really super complicated. So, but that first, that first if statement all by itself, you know, don't even mind all this other nonsense here. If it was just this, these two uh, drag and drop elements, that would handle just moving around without the blocks at all. You would just be able to move around. So now this else part. So you have to think about this. Like again, if this ends up being a false statement, I fall through. And I and what does this say? But if this is not a solid base class, so if I fall through and I say, what's not not mean? That means that there is a solid base class if I get to the else condition. And so if there is, again, I have to differentiate because if there's, if it was a box, then I can think, oh, maybe I could push it. But if it's a wall, I hit a literal dead end and I don't want to move to the right. So now I can say, okay, check 60 pixels to my right. Now check to see if it's a box. And it's not, you know, the not is not checked because I'm trying to make sure there is a box to my right. And now the interesting part about this with the drag and drop element here excuse me, is there is a thing called a target. And what this what this drag and drop element can do, if it turns out there is a box, like if there is a box 60 pixels to my right, 
it can get me the exact box object that it's touching, that it would be touching. And that's what I call ints here. I like to use ints. That's just my conventional way of doing things. Some people use temp and some people use, you know, whatever it is. I do have temp temp clicked because once I'm done with this if statement, I don't need that anymore. But I just, but I do need to have this object so I can actually tell it, hey, my character tried to move to the right. Why don't you move to the right as well? So, so that's this part here. So if there is a box 60 pixels to my right, then go ahead and, and you know, so I've, you know, I'm going to move myself here, but I'm going to say, okay, get me that box here because I'm going to need it. And so now there's a secondary check, right? So this is where we're at. We're at here where we say, okay, I know I have a box to my right, and now I have to check one more position over to see if there's an empty space. So that's what I'm doing here. This tells me there's a box, and now this goes, hey, any is, is there not anything solid? 120 pixels to my right, two squares over. And so in this case, if there's not a solid base class, that means there's an empty space. So these two things are chained together. This is an if and an if to say, if there's a box one position over to my right, and there's nothing two positions over to my right, then I can jump myself 60 pixels over and I can jump the box 60 pixels over but you got to be careful with this one because you have to go in and say expression here you have to, you, it's impossible to find the drag and drop element you have to literally type in the word ints here and hit enter it's a weird game maker thing but this is basically saying applies to right for object how do I close out here I'm just how do I close out okay whatever for object for the ints object, which is the box, take it and move it 60 pixels to the right. Take me and move me 60 pixels to the right. And so, again, coming back, that kind of fills in all the, the rest of the details here, where those four cases can move because empty space, and now everything changes, obviously, as I keep trying. So anything that has, anything that has an open space, I can keep going, and then anything else. And, of course, right now, the... The depth ordering is off. The characters are there. They're just the, the box. The goal is being drawn over the character right now. So we can fix that up. We can actually fix that up right now. So I could take my hero, put a create event in, and say depth. It's the easiest way to do this. There's no reason to create. Oh, not depth. Uh, bear. There's no reason to go ahead and create layering and all. It's just the game's not that complicated. So I can say give me a depth of negative 2. So now the character will be drawn on top of everything else because the more negative is the closer to your eye. So, okay, there you go. So now you can see the characters over the goals, which is what we want. But then the last question is, when I run this one more time, what happens about the boxes and the goals? Like, what do I want to see? I probably want to, this is a challenging thing, the goal, the, the goal may be, Maybe I didn't pick the best graphic, but I would probably want the, the box to be drawn over the goal at the very least, right? Because I would think so anyway. So in a create event, I can put the same thing, the depth ordering here, and I can say, okay, your depth is uh, negative one because the goal is at zero right now. So if I'm, oops, keep forgetting it puts it over here and so now the box is on top of the goal and so in the game itself I think it changes the color of the box when there's a goal underneath it because how would you know there's a goal there just like I couldn't tell there was a box there a second ago but again we're not going to worry about such things today this is just a simple first off concept so then yep so the, the box is always drawn over the goal and then the player is always driven over the, drawn over the goal as well okay but that handles moving to the right and then all the depth ordering. And so now, making this work for all the other directions is just a tedious process because all the hard work is done. So I can du duplicate my event and say, key press left. And now just go ahead and go in here and just basically, since it's just rights and lefts, all I have to do is just turn the positives negative. So this one, this one's pretty simple. You don't have to do any hard work here. How do I get into the, there it goes, minus 60, minus 60. And so we'd, I'd have to redo the test room at this current time. Maybe I could just go ahead and do this. 
I don't you know, just to try it out, just to test moving right and left. So now I have everybody, everybody over. I can go left, left. Okay, so far so good. I mean, really, I mean, a lot of times with this kind of stuff, the hard work is just getting it going, and now it's just a matter of changing the x's and the y's and the positives and the negatives. So coming back, all I did again was just change all the negative 60s and the, or positive 60s and positive 120s to negative. Okay, so that handles that condition. So now I can do the same for, I'll turn right into a uh, down, a duplicate event for key press down. And now this one's a little tricky because I'm going down, which is a positive, but I'm going a positive Y instead of a positive X. So in these cases, all I really have to do are just swap the X's and the Y's. And that applies for every, all, everything vertical versus horizontal. But because I'm going down, it's a positive in the Y direction. And this is good. just going to do this while I'm not talking and thinking about it and make sure... I do sit, you know, just put the right numbers in. What's nice about this is if you screw up one thing, you know exactly where you screwed it up. Let's see. So I can keep going down. Now I hit and right, and now I have a whole ton of characters. Can't do anything with it, but I was able to move down at the very least. And we'll we'll be able to test it out in a second here when I duplicate this and say key press down for up. And it does get a little tricky. Key press down, key down, down, all this stuff. Like ugh, it does get a little the names of these things aren't as nice as they could be but for the up I'm just changing I'm just taking the down and just turning all the positives negative. and to test this thing out I will go ahead now and change over and use my second level because I created the, the original first level from our thing earlier and let's try that out instead so let's see, I can move right, I can move left, I can move down, I can move up. Great, uh-oh. I think I just used the wrong event here. I was talking about it, and I probably did it. Key press, key press, key press, key down. Notice, I don't know, did you notice how fast the character was moving? Because with this key down event, every game frame I'm holding the up arrow key down, it's moving. So he was moving way too fast. So I made that, that was just a mistake, and I just change event to key press up and that should change that thought I was doing something there okay so now I can move right I can move left I can move down I can move up one square one tile at a time and let's try it out okay I'm pushing down I'm pushing right I'm pushing up so far so good right so the only thing I haven't tested I don't want to break it just yet but so far everything else is working just fine and let's see yep so this isn't the best example because we can't test every little situation out. But there, I mean, the level would be complete if I had a working uh, a working controller object watching over the objects and watching over the game. So I can go back just to test out the test room one more time. Whoops. I hate this when it comes to putting this. Oh, come on. There we go, test room. And I can just go ahead and erase a lot of this stuff. I don't need the goals. This is just a test. This is just a tester area. Okay, so let's see. Bring this over. Bring this around. Okay, let's try it out. Okay, so now... Oops. I can go... I can move right, left, up, and down, like I said. Okay, I can't move left can't move right, can't move down, can't move up. I can push the block up and down, left and right. Yep. And then now the other one is can I go up or down? And there's two of them. No. No. So yep, everything is looking good. I can't go through walls. All of that stuff already. I think so that's all nine cases tested in all four different directions. And so I think we're ready to move on and finish up this game. We've already been going for about 20 minutes now. So now the final step is the, the win condition. How do I know if I won the game? And so in our case, going to level one room here, when if at any given time, since we're moving square for square, there's no animation going on here or anything like that, then if every goal is touching a box, then you've won the game. 
And so this one is a little tricky. I'm saying this is how old I am at working with this kind of stuff. Back in back in the day, I, gosh knows how many years ago when Game Maker six, seven, and eight was around. This we're talking at least five, six, seven years ago now. You could do this in a drag and drop element, and things have since changed. So now I have to kind of write some code. So this is kind of like the, there's always this trust me element that comes about when we're dealing with drag and drops, and sometimes you can use drag and drop, and sometimes you can't. But uh, this is the, if you don't follow along exactly, I'm going to describe what's happening. But if you don't 100% understand, that's perfectly fine for this demo. So what I'm going to do here is create what I call a controller object. Um, just, I'll, call it a I'll call it 0, 0. I'll call it controller level 0, 0, 1. Because I know what I'm going to do in the next video. And I don't need any sprite attached to it or anything like that. Oops, I didn't spell it right. But what I'm going to do, the hard part a lot of times is, you know, this is the number one thing, put it in your room. And so controller objects, as I said, conventionally, I put them in the upper left-hand corner right off the screen so they're not, you know, they're not in the, in the level so they get lost because it's just a tiny little question mark. But we need this thing to watch over our game and just basically ask a question. Did I win yet? Did I win yet? Did I win yet? Just like my five-year-old asking me a million questions about everything. You know, just, did you win? Did I win? What's going on? How's it doing? You know, that kind of thing. And so all I'm going to do is put a step event in here, and I'm going to put in a bunch of code, like literal code here. And I'll, and again, there's no drag and drop way to do this that I'm aware of. If you know how to do this in drag and drop, let me know. That'd be amazing. I'd love to. I'd love to learn how to how to do that. Like I used to be able to do it in a couple couple lines of drag and drop code. Okay. So what we need to do here is basically think of it this way. This is this comes down to way math proofs work, mathematics proofs work as well. And so I'm just going to make an assumption on, on a frame by frame basis and just go. I won the game. Prove me wrong. Right. Just that old meme with the guy sitting there at the chair. Just you know, I've won. Prove me wrong. And so it's up to my code to prove and find a counterexample to go, nope, you didn't win yet. So in this case, just looking at the screen here, you go, oh, okay, there's no, this goal does not have a box on it. So therefore, nope, you haven't won yet. Here is, I found a counterexample for you. There is one box that does not have, I'm sorry, one goal that does not have a box on it. And that's all I have to find is one counterexample. I, it doesn't matter. You don't have to keep digging it in. Oh, there's two, there's three, there's a hundred. All I need to do is find one counterexample where the gold is not touching a box, and I've done my job and I've proven that the game goes on. And that's what I'm that's what this is coming from. So I'm gonna write code. Oh nice. And so and so what I'm gonna say here, I'm gonna say one, and I'm gonna say equals true. Prove me wrong, right? That's what I'm that's what I'm saying. And so I can say if one equals true. And notice that these are parentheses, these are curly braces, these are that's single equals versus double equals. Again, just kind of just understand that that's where we're going here. And so if one equals true, then I want to do a show message and say you you beat the level. And then I'll just do a game end. We'll, we can ch fix this up in the future. Or if you want to do a game or you want to do a room room restart or something like that. Whatever, that's all good. So basically, and then in a minute here, this is the prove me wrong part. And so the game, can I even, will it even drag over here? Yep, because on the first frame of the first game, you go, I, I won, because I didn't find any counterexample, and that's obviously not right. So there's my beat the level, and right now, um, it's going to do it over and over and over again, because every time I restart the room, that first game frame is going to prove to be a winner. Okay, so here's the prove me wrong part. And so I have to say, for every goal in my game, and notice how I named my objects. You have to always make sure whatever you name your objects in the resources match up over here. So that's why it'll turn red. It turns red to say, okay, goal object with goal. And so the with statement in this case is basically like a for each loop or for every. For every goal in my scene, do something. And I'm going to say if, oops, not in, if uh, place meeting. And so wherever I am in space, box. And so look up what place meeting does. 
place meeting checks for a, for a position in space with a collision with another object, and it returns a true false. And that's what I'm looking for. I just I don't care which in this case I don't care which box is touching it. I just care that there is a box touching it, and it, or basically if there isn't a box touching it, because I'm just trying to find that one counter example, and then I can say. Nope, you didn't win. Break out of the loop. There's no again. There's no reason to continue on doing stuff once I found my counterexample, and I have to use other dot here. It's just a game maker thing because I'm in the goal object. Other dot gets me to this the one that's outside of the with statement. It's just a tricky little game maker thing, but I think that should do it now because basically as soon as a box a goal finds a a, a box that isn't touching it, I say okay, didn't win. And so now that this isn't true, the game must continue on. So let's try it out. So I guess it said every box, not just one box, every box must be touching. Okay, and now I actually don't know. I'm, I can only give you 99% odds on this. Let's see. Boom, boom, and boom. And there you go. And so this is another little thing, Game Maker. Before the draw event came up, this popped up. So because of that, it doesn't draw the box in the correct spot. But I did. You did beat the level. You did win. And now I hit OK, and it restarts the level. And I could keep playing until I exit out. So that that covers the basic gameplay elements that I wanted to cover for this first part of the lecture. I figure I'd do it in two parts because you have 26 minutes already. So what do I want to do? I, the next part of this, of the next video, I want to add to the, the ability to keep track of how many steps you've made. And then I also want to add a main menu to this and I also want to create different levels. And, from, and then I want to show for each level I can maintain the best number of steps you've taken in the session that you've played. In the other video I make, I show you how to do a set up a file so you can, you know, you can save best scores forever. But again, this is a, a more simplified version of that. So we're going to keep session data. You turn the game on and you beat a level, it'll keep track of the best score and then for each individual level because each individual level will definitely have a different score related to it. And so that would then take me into the homework assignment that I'm going to give to my students, but if you're just following along on YouTube, Obviously, you don't have uh, that to go off of. Um, but that covers everything I wanted to cover in this video. So thanks for sticking out with me, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.